Have you ever wondered how beer is made? Guys, I just love having conversations with people about beer. Sometimes we might compare tasting notes. Other times we might be talking about our favourite breweries. And then sometimes we're talking about brewing techniques. In having these conversations, what I find is the people that I'm speaking to are anywhere from beginners to really advanced brewers. So sometimes I'm giving the lessons and teaching people about beer, and more often than not, I'm getting a lesson myself. Often with people that are new to beer, they just want to get a really quick and dirty overview of how beer is made. So here we are tonight guys, in my shed, standing in front of this whiteboard here, and I'm going to give you guys a bit of an overview of the process that we go through to make beer. Okay, so for this explanation, we're pretty much going to stick to how the home brewers do it. But I will touch on some of the methods and the things that the guys use in the more commercial setups as well. So a quick recap for you. The four main ingredients in beer are water, hops, malt, and yeast. And every brew starts with a recipe for how much of each of those ingredients you need to make your desired beer. So the first step is to take the malt and tip it into some kind of mill so it'll allow us to grind it up. I've got this really simple two roller contraption that I connect my electric drill to and it basically just breaks the husks of the grains and allows us to get at those sugars. Okay, so the next step is to fill the mash tun with the required water. Now while that water is warming up, generally we take these grains that have been all nicely broken up, put them into a bucket or whatever, and then we take that grain and we put it up into the top of the mash tun to create what feels like a bit of a porridge. And then we stir it all up with a big ass paddle just like this. The water and the grains react with the heat, allowing the enzymes in the malt to break down those complex starches into sugars that we can use. At the end of the process, we have a sugary liquid called wort. Now look, the more advanced and even commercial brewers don't just throw the grains into the mash tun with the water, set a temperature and they're done. Now what they actually do is take the mash through a number of different temperature raises during the mashing. Now what that does is allow the enzymes to break down the different materials in the grains, but that's a whole other video. The next step is to make sure that we've got all of the sugars out of our grain. So we do something called lautering. We raise the mash up to about 77 degrees Celsius to stop the conversion of the sugars in the mash. Then we recirculate the wort over the top of the mash. This process can be as simple or as complex as you like depending on your system. The simple way is, open the tap at the bottom of the mash tun, fill a jug, and then recirculate it over the top of the grain bed a couple of times. Or in the case of my brewery, which has a full sparge system, whereby the liquid is just circulated over the top of the grain bed over and over again for around about half an hour, just to extract those final, final sugars. So once you've extracted all those sugars out of the grains in the mash tun, it's time to take that liquid and transfer it into the brew kettle where you can begin your boil. During this stage of the boil, which usually takes around about 60 to 90 minutes, you are sterilizing this liquid and getting rid of any excess bacteria. At this stage, you also concentrate the liquid a bit as well, because some of that liquid is boiled off in the process. At this stage, it's time to add the hops. The ones at the start of the brew are all about adding bitterness, but as you move through the brew, you get towards the end, you add some in for flavor, and then finally at the very end of the boil, it's all about aroma. So you finish boiling your wort, and now it's time to chill it down to around about 20 degrees to allow you to get that beer into that fermenter and start the next process. Now in commercial breweries, they use something like a heat exchange, which allows you to circulate wort through some pipes around some chilled pipes. It really gets that, that wort down to the, the magical 20 degrees or thereabouts really quickly. In the home brewer world, there are some fantastic adventures that people use out there to allow them to do a similar process on a smaller scale. So once your beer's cooled down, it's time to add the yeast. Here we go, put them all into the fermenter here. Now ideally, you want to be controlling the temperature in the fermenter. Around about 18 to 20 degrees is ideal for when you've uh, got uh, ales fermenting in the, in the vessel. Now, at this stage, they stay in there for around about two to five days. And to put it pretty crass and pretty simple, these little living organisms jump in here, they have a party. They eat all the sugars, 
they fart out all the CO2 and poop out the alcohol. If the recipe calls for it, it's now time to dry hop. Now at this stage, adding hops to the beer doesn't add any extra bitterness. It's all about adding those awesome aromas into the beer and usually you leave them for around about two to five days. A step that I really like to do once the beer's been in the fermenter and it's finished its ferment is cold crash. So that's where you lower the temperature of the beer to around about two to five degrees for around about five days. And it just allows all those little extra bits in the beer just to settle down to the bottom and it won't get into that finished beer. After you've finished cold crashing, time to put the beer into some vessels. So you can put it into bottles, maybe you'll go into kegs. Or perhaps you might go straight into growlers. Whatever you choose, it's up to you. If you go into bottles, you'll add some extra priming sugar and leave them in the bottles for two to four weeks to allow that carbonation to build up. If you're going into kegs, you've got a few options around how you carbonate it, whether you do it quickly or slowly to get those nice bubbles going in those beers. But whatever you do, you've got beer. So that, in a nutshell, is brewing. Hopefully, if you're new to brewing or looking to take it up, you got a little bit out of my video here today. So, until we talk again in this great big craft beer land of ours, cheers to great beers.